Gary Webb was an American investigative journalist who wrote a three-part series for the San Jose Mercury News in 1996 called Dark Alliance. The series was about connections between the Central Intelligence Agency, the US-backed Contra Army seeking to overthrow Nicaragua's government, and cocaine trafficking into the United States. The articles sparked a public and congressional outcry that led to CIA and Department of Justice investigations of Webb's claims. While the Dark Alliance articles covered a number of areas, one of its key parts was the allegation that the CIA turned a blind eye to the cocaine trafficking of the Contra army it had created and supported. This drug smuggling fed directly into the United States and helped to fuel the crack epidemic of the 1980s. The profits from this imported cocaine, Webb alleged, were used to finance the Contra forces attacking the Sandinista government in Nicaragua. In addition to that circle of finance, Webb also claimed that the CIA meddled with and squashed law enforcement efforts to investigate and prosecute those involved in the drug trafficking. The response to Webb's series was impassioned on all sides. The CIA forcefully denied the charges. The Washington Post, the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times, all of which had ignored or downplayed evidence of CIA complicity in the drug trade for years, made attacks on the series. The CIA also got to work behind the scenes and collaborated where it could with news outlets who wanted to challenge Webb's narrative. There's even one reported case where they successfully discouraged one major news outlet from covering Webb's work. It's important to note that Webb never claimed to have any evidence that the CIA engineered the whole thing, only that they knew it was going on, approved of it, and even met with Contra leaders and funders to discuss it. But the reaction in the opposition media portrayed Webb as having basically said, the CIA did it, and used this falsehood to discredit him and his exposures. The Mercury News, where the articles were initially published, at first defended Webb's reporting in the ensuing storm, but ultimately they began to distance themselves from him. In a front page column, the newspaper's executive director claimed that the series fell short of their editorial standards. In the end, Webb resigned from the Mercury and moved on to other investigative work. In 1998, the CIA released two reports that confirmed that the CIA had failed to investigate or act upon allegations that the anti-government forces that supported in Nicaragua were engaged in drug trafficking. Despite this seeming vindication, Webb's career had been damaged badly, and it left him reeling for years to come. In 2004, it was reported that Webb had died by suicide, and even in death, he was not spared from scandal. While it is reported that he had for years struggled with depression, and people close to him are quoted as saying that he had been unhappy for a long time about his inability to get another job at a major newspaper, The fact that he died from not one, but two gunshots to the head have led many to speculate that the CIA got their final revenge for having their corruption exposed eight years earlier. To this day, Webb's work remains controversial and the Dark Alliance series continues to raise questions, not just for its contents showing the CIA working with drug groups and profiting off sales to American communities, but also the circumstances of Webb's death. He reflected on his fall from grace in the 2002 book Into the Buzzsaw. Prior to Dark Alliance, Webb said, I was winning awards, getting raises, lecturing college classes, appearing on TV shows, and judging journalism contests. And then I wrote some stories that made me realize how sadly misplaced my bliss had been. The reason I'd enjoyed such smooth sailing for so long hadn't been as I'd assumed because I was careful and diligent and good at my job. The truth was that in all those years, I hadn't written anything important enough to suppress. The government reaction was no reaction. And this, I I believe, was a a very careful strategy because nobody was going to believe the government if they came out and said we didn't do it. 
um, the proof was fairly overwhelming since we had all these government documents showing that, they, that it had happened. So what happened was they let the so-called liberal press speak for them. And they had the national security reporters at the Washington Post, who coincidentally used to work for the CIA, uh, write stories saying it doesn't mean anything.